Hey, what's up? My name is Danny McLaughlin and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're actually doing another pedal board build for my buddy RC. RC just finished up a big tour with the artist Role Model. He hit all of the United States and he just finished up three days at the El Rey in Los Angeles. RC plays and does sessions around Los Angeles. He's a close friend of mine. I went to school with him. Uh, so I'm excited to be doing this build. I'm also very excited because today's video is brought to you by my brand new pedalboard course. People's pedal boards I tend to see fall into one of two categories. Those that work consistently and those that don't. Maybe cables are failing, power supplies are not lining up. I think we've all been there where you open up the pedal board case and all the pedals are on the floor. And so the question may arise, how do I get a pedal board that's neat and reliable? Now before you take it off to some builder and spend a lot of money on labor to get it neat and organized, why don't you give it a try yourself and get educated on how to build a tour ready pedal board. These are some of the things that I actually cover in my new pedal board course how to build your own cables, how to distribute power most efficiently, keeping things nice and tight and reliable so that you won't have any failures at a show. And the amazing thing about educating yourself is if you ever have a failure at a show or a session, you know how to fix it. I'm gonna give you all the tips that I've learned from 10 years of pedal board building, everything that I've made mistakes on, and since then, I've built things like this or this or my own personal pedal board, which is this stereo MIDI switched huge pedal board that I love. And after three years of using this thing, I've never had any failures. So through the course, I'll be taking you through an entire build of a pedal board, and you can follow along if you like. We'll have a finished product that I deliver to a client at the very end, and I'll also send you away with a product list of my favorite things to use when building a pedal board. So if you're interested, check it out on my website, and I'll see you there. The course is available on danielmclaughlinmusic.com under the Courses tab, and of course it's going to be linked below. Everything that I talk about in today's video is covered in that course, so check it out if you're interested or if you've ever thought about getting a board built by me. This is a great way to have that done a lot cheaper. Cool, so let's go ahead and check out the build of this board. RC's former pedal board has a couple things that I'm not a big fan of, specifically the cabling, uh, the power supply, and also how he adhered the pedals to the board. Obviously with a bigger tour, RC wanted to have the board be a little bit more reliable and secure, so we're going to address that. He also wanted it a little bit bigger, so we're going to use a Pedal Train Classic 2 to accommodate some of the new pedals that he got. It's always a bit of a challenge to think about pedal order and layout. Considering RC is going to be on some dark stages, we generally want to put some of the most used pedals on that bottom rail to keep it as mindless as possible. Are you are you set on having the RC and the Soul Driven at the bottom? I'm not set on anything really. But now I still need to find a spot for the warped pedal. Dude, I know, yeah. <laughs> Maybe try doing the big pedal first, like the Benson, where we think that would go. Oh, uh, okay. We also have to keep in mind where the power jacks are, as well as how big our cables are that we're using where the power supplies are sticking out, or where the power inputs are, if they're gonna intersect right. at all, which I don't Doesn't think we're dealing with like that it. too much. Maybe here on the soul driven just a little bit, but that's on the top, right? Oh. Yeah, I think, I think this could be the move. We'll get into it a little bit more in a bit, but we're using Evidence Audio Monorail and the screw and solderless system. So we're just gonna put the termination ends in all the pedals just to make sure that everything will fit up front. RC's former power supply was the Walrus Audio Phoenix, which was kind of the Rolls Royce of toroidal transformer based power supplies. Now switch mode power supplies are really popular, and considering RC is going on tour in Europe with Role Model next year, we're going to switch them over to the Pedal Power 3 made by Voodoo Lab. This is actually my first time seeing this power supply, but I've been a Pedal Power 2 user my whole life, and it's a great power supply. It's light, it accommodates all of the pedals, and we're gonna be able to mount it on the bottom of the pedal train so that we can save a bunch of room on top. So now that the layout is decided and the power supply is mounted, we can start adhering the pedals. I like to work from the outside in, and we're using industrial Velcro to secure everything. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, careful. Carefully. I always recommend splurging for the industrial Velcro over going with like the Velcro that comes with the pedal train or any kind of like kitchen Velcro you might have. If you can go for it, you may want to consider dual lock as well. That's my personal favorite. 
All right, so now that we have the outside pedals secured, we can start to think about cabling. We're actually gonna run the audio cables first, and RC, as I mentioned before, picked up the Evidence Audio Monorail cable with the screw-in solderless plugs. In my opinion, this is the best solderless system available. It's extremely reliable, it's extremely strong, there's always a good connection when you screw it on. I use it with all of my boards, and I always make sure I take a little bit of time to teach the person who I'm building the board for how to use the system, because if it goes wrong on the road, one of the benefits is that you don't need to have a soldering iron to fix it. You can just cut yourself a new connection real quick. All right, dude. So we're doing this first one, just in terms of thinking about these, because you, you'll probably end up doing a couple too. You always give yourself a little bit more than you need. Yeah. You see, because the way that we're routing to make it nice and tight. So you want to pretend like you're doing that and chop it. Exactly. Yeah. Up. Chop yeah. it maybe like right even around here. Yeah. Because um, you can always tie it down. Extra. Yeah. Exactly. The cables are looking good. I did a little bit of tidying up with the zip ties. It's always a good idea to test at this stage. So we ran all the power to all the pedals. Um, as you can see, with locking a lot of the cables down. It would be a bummer to have to go and cut a lot of that stuff back up. All right. First time, it and it's through. working. The signal made it through. Signal made it through. Now obviously we'll do some testing in a little bit to see if we lost any like high end or anything. Sounds pretty crispy though. So always make sure that your cables are working right. So now that we're tested and everything works, we can lock down these power cables to make sure everything's tight and nothing's gonna catch on a snag on the road or in transit. Cool, so the cable runs are all looking nice. Luckily we did this a few weeks before RC went out on the road. So I told RC to bring it to a couple gigs around town, test it and make sure everything's working good. I was really confident in the work and RC also got a Pelican Air 1605 case so that it's gonna be extra secure in transit. And so from what I've heard, the board has totally stood up to the tour. And I'm actually catching up with RC tonight at the El Rey in Los Angeles. Let's go see him, let's go see the board and let's go see the tones that he's using. Uh, we are at the El Rey Theater in Los Angeles, uh, second of three nights. Tight. So it's pretty awesome, honestly. This is really. Let's hear about this guitar too, dude. Uh, LSL Strat Satikoy. Satikoy. Strat. Baby. Technically. Um, when did I get this? Oh, there I am. How's that Leo been? Dude, amazing. That's a, that's a great pedal. It's my favorite pedal. It's my favorite <laughs> pedal too. So classic. Let's start with like the whole like heart and soul. So I'm not using an amp. Um, so I'm using a Walrus ACS-1. Um, I do, like went back and forth like when there was a bunch of, so there's a bunch of fly dates on this, so like flying with an amp, and that was just something I didn't really want to do, but I really want to use a real amp because I like real amps. And so I was like, okay, I should probably do something digital. And what would be like the digital thing that would most feel like I'm just using an amp? Yeah. Um, and I settled on this, and I couldn't be happier. This thing is ridiculous. I'm just using um, the like Fender style um, emulation cool. uh, for the amp, and then the cab, I'm just using the, uh, oh, uh, I'm using the Super Reverb cab. All in here, so I really thought that I would miss like how it felt, but um, not really, because they still kind of crank everything, so it still feels loud. Yeah. Like I'm moving air, but um, yeah, so that's- Can we hear a little bit of- Yeah, uh, here's the- uh, <laughs> Yeah, Here's literally. The this is just the dry. This right? is just dry. I'll turn the point off. You can't really tell it's on the... Yeah. 
drum sets. Nice. Oh, actually, you know, that was cheating, too, because that was the RC booster on it. <laughs> but I leave that on all the time. Yeah, um, it still sounded really good and real yeah. clean. Um, I keep it like it's just a little bit if I really dig it. Just a little bit. Um, I'll have the flint on most of the time mm -hmm. just to give it some space. Although, not as much anymore with the... Um, with the ACS-1, because the room sound in that is really nice. Mm. Um, so that that was another thing that like sold me on like this pedal, was like, um, it feels like, I mean, an amp is in a room, like, in my ears, that's what it sounds like. Yeah, that's um, big. So yeah, but... Um, but the Flint, you're, you've got, what, what reverb are you using with the, the Flint? The Flint, I'm using the 70s. Spring? Um, yep, 70s spring, and... Uh, so there's one song where I kind of crank the mix here and the decay up to about here, and it's just like some stabs. Yeah. yeah. The way that the knobs are set on there right now is not what my preset is. The, in the if you look, if it was like turned to the, what the preset were, was, the the treble is like really close to all the way up, mm. and the uh, yeah the bass is kind of down. But, um, so that's kind of why I cranked the color, because the, if the reverb is super dark, it would just be like, um, just not cool. But here's what that would sound like. Like, just for stabs like that. That's a really long, just huge, just like big halls. Let's hear slow dancing in a burning room. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, we don't have to hear that. That's all you get. <laughs> um, Sounded right for it. I didn't get it. No, no, he asked for it. <laughs> um, um, okay, so I was, the reason I paused was I slide. So, yeah, there's a, one song where I play slide. Cool. And um, so for that, I'm using, I'll throw on the compressor because it's just like, just Rounds a nice it out. little hug, you know, just enough to feel like, sometimes you feel, you, when you play slide, it's like, you know, you just want that little extra sustain. So um, I use the compressor, and then I use um, the Benson preamp here, which nice. is my like main. Um, I use it as a main light drive. Yeah. Um, Light. Just have to like resist the urge to like. <laughs> not, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, demonetize. Unfortunately, oh, <laughs> so I guess that's not very light at all. But in the context of the track that it's with, it sounds yeah light. Gives um, just a little bit of movement. That's cool. Yeah. Oh yeah, flanger is made for seventh chords. Yeah, it was actually. You know, yeah. they don't tell you that. Or jazz chords. Jazz um, chords. So okay. what about this warped vinyl? Oh yeah, so I use that a, uh, quite a bit actually. So there's one song where I kind of just everything north. And I kind of it's kind of just like a chorus. Uh huh. Um. That would sound like, yeah. so that would sound like this. Uh, you know, just like a, uh, the reverb. Is. Yeah. Um, Give it a little bit of shake. Yeah. way down that's the, like I love that about this pedal is the um, the tone knob you can really brighten it or darken it um, okay and so you're also changing these settings on the fly during the yeah, gig I don't have a um, like MIDI switcher or anything or it's right. it's not like hooked up to 
the Ableton rig or anything mm. like that. But, so why don't you just get an Axe FX? <laughs> <laughs> I've been told to. It's honestly like, you know, I'm sure at some point I will. So, and I throw the compressor on for that, and that's supposed to sound like... Those, those lights yeah. turned on at the right moment for it that did. song this too. Is, that was kind of like sick. Crazy lights. <laughs> the timeline is on almost every song, just like yeah, give it a little bit more text, space texturally. Um, yeah, let's hear the timeline sound. So I, there's one where I do. Uh, where is it? Nope. Here it is. Um, so it's I do like these stabs of like repeats that kind of ring out. Um, cool. So it's like it would sound like this. And you've got a little bit more freedom with this, even though a lot of role model stuff is fully produced out. You can, it kind of yeah. lets you let go a yeah, little I bit kinda, and do I what mean, you need to. There are songs where um, there's like only acoustic parts, but like you kind of listen to it and like live, you're like, you know, if I just added like big chords here on electric, yeah. it would just make it so much bigger. And the a part is so small and it would kind of just be a waste for me to like play that yeah so yeah stuff like that i like take a lot of liberties on let's see more timeline sounds what else do i use there's one song that starts with like a dotted eighth like ringing out on this chord like <laughs> Soul driven. That is the soul driven. Oh, yeah, I didn't talk about that one yet, huh? Um, this has been on my board forever, man. I mean, it's useful if I need like one more, like extra, a little bit of extra. So sometimes I'll reach for that. Totally. So you have three gain stages on this board, huh? Yeah, yeah, three. I guess four if you count that extra. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then do you also have the Leal? Is that you can yeah, get some gain on yeah, that so thing too? I, I use. Yeah, I use that. I do ride the volume mod quite a bit because that's just how I've done it always. Yeah. Um, but the way that the board is set up that you so graciously uh. wired um, <laughs> is that it goes into that before uh -huh. the drive pedals. Um, so it controls basically, it's like another guitar volume pod. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to if you were to put that after drive pedals, that would kind of control it would just be the volume, volume of the gain. Yeah. yeah. Um, which. We talked about changing. I might. I don't know. I've, yeah. got, I've gotten used to it like this, and yeah. it works. Um, well, and that's the beauty of the evidence audio stuff is if you ever need to do that, it's just clipping yeah. a couple and then re, you know, re-jumping. Yeah, you know, this is like super solid, and like it's been. I literally have watched airline people throw this in the Pelican <laughs> case, and it's been super solid. Yeah. So no problems, and then yeah. also you probably feel because we built it together. You probably feel like you could take care of it if something yeah, happened. Yeah, like I, I watched you do it and I like asked you, you know, what, what that, like, you know, um, just like taking care of it. Man, it's just like, and people talk, people, the guitar head, the big guitar wig heads like, <laughs> really uh, don't like the solderless thing. And I mean, this feels like super solid. 
I feel super confident in it and like it's set up to where I can swap out because I built it like was with we built it with the idea of like this will pretty much stay but I might mm -hmm. want to swap out like overdrive pedals because yeah. who doesn't <laughs> want to do that all the time yeah so um but it's super it'll be super easy to do that and it's just like if you told me like I can pay an extra hundred fifty dollars to like guarantee like you know have a better quality thing and like just like, it's not gonna fail like yeah yeah who wouldn't like it's like you know you start to play places like this and be like it would be such a bummer well, tight man really looking forward to the show yeah. thank you so much Dude, rc yeah, totally. for uh for letting me come back here and film you Dude, thank you man um, I can do. dude anything else you want to plug anything i want to plug no i mean just follow me on social media yeah what's your social media uh just at rc rossell let's go I'm, uh, i post about guitar stuff sometimes yes sometimes about my cat mostly about guitar stuff <laughs> and yeah, man. That's it. Really. Thanks, dude. All right. We'll see you at the show. All right, pretty cool stuff. Thank you so much for checking out the video. If you're interested in that pedal board course, the links are below. I cover all the ins and outs of building a pedal board like this one that's tour ready, nice and clean, super low noise, very reliable. And instead of spending more money on gear, maybe spend some money on educating yourself on how to build and maintain boards like these. But anyway, if you like the video, please leave me a like and I'll see you guys in the next one.